across anything that I thought was kind of in, that was of interest to me. And I kept thinking about the very first experiences I had, you know, Alien and Blade Runner. And um, I thought there was a genesis of a very small idea that hadn't really been examined. Um, so I think in the press in recent months, it's been talked about as having the, the DNA of Alien, which is a perfectly good description. But once we met and we evolved in, our, in the storytelling process and, and the experience with Damon at a, across a table, which is really where all the work is done, um, is six weeks of that of talking, the story just started to evolve and take off into another universe. And um, I think that's what we managed to pull off very successfully. And if we're lucky, maybe there'll be a, a second part to all of this. Um, because it, the film does leave you with uh, some really nice, big, open questions. So speaking of open questions, there is this, and you just referred to it, sort of ongoing question uh, in everybody's mind uh, as to, is this an original film? Um, is it something else? And up until now, we've had to kind of play this little game, but, but now we're starting to show some stuff. So is there anything that you would like to, to show now to, to this audience here for perhaps the first time uh, so that they could uh, have something more to talk about as, a, as opposed to asking us what the movie is? You mean the trailer? Yeah, maybe like, and not the trailer. And, and not, not the trailer that's been online for the last 12 hours, the actual bona fide first official two and a half minute long uh, trailer of Prometheus, if you guys would show please, and we have David Michael Fassman. because it was monsoon so I climbed onto a hilltop under a tarp and like read it in two hours and said I don't even think I finished it I was like of course I'll do this are you kidding me and Michael what about you uh... same thing minus Malaysia and the monsoon I was uh, I was at home in my flat in London and um, there was a man with a gun to my head and I had two hours to read the script I'm a slow reader so I was sweating um, <laughs> It was, uh, you know, and I just thought it was, you know, each page, there was something new and there was something unexplained. I mean, it was just really, you could never put your finger on, on anything. It's like, a, it's almost like a fish keeps slipping out of your hand. Or, um, it, it was such an intelligent piece of writing, I thought. And then, of course, with the master at the helm, it, it was just, uh, you know, an amazing opportunity. And um, I'm so grateful. We had a lot of fun making it. and. Um, Hopefully it's, uh, it's, it's gonna do you proud, all, all the fans out there, because, you know, as I said, that's the first time I saw it. It looks pretty amazing. Uh, it, I, I know Ridley and I have, have, have uh, I just wanted to say Ridley and I, like we're friends. Uh, <laughs> we've, ex we've experienced a certain degree of, you know, people asking us, not just uh, at events like these, but our friends and our family and our loved ones, what is this thing that you're working on? What is this, uh, what, it, what is Prometheus? What do you say to them? It's like the closest we're ever gonna get to feeling like CIA, CIA spies, like where you can't share with your loved ones what you're actually doing. I told them it was a romantic comedy. <laughs> <laughs> so they're gonna be shocked. <laughs> you're just a guy looking for a girl to say I love you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to find love in love all the wrong places. places. <laughs> 
Uh, Ridley, can you tell us a, a little bit about what it was like working with uh, with not just these two, but the amazing ensemble? Obviously, uh, I think we have to mention Numi Rapaz, uh, who is awesome. Uh, Idris Elba, who is just incredible. Morgan Marshall Green, who you guys have uh, have not really uh, met yet, but is great. Let, what, can you talk a little bit about the cast of the movie? Yeah, I mean, uh, what's the most difficult thing is set is the script. The story of the script, thanks to this gentleman on the right. Um, yeah, the give him a hand! Yeah, give yeah. him We all know it will be my fault that the movie sucks, so yeah. thank you. Very well, and, well played. And the, the next most important thing is who am I going to have to play all these wonderful parts? And so I spend a great deal of time thinking, and with, of course, a good casting director. Um, but I've already got pretty good preconceptions of you know, who the main players are going to be, therefore I just hope that that's who I'm going to get. Because I've done enough homework by that moment and also have watched them enough to think that uh, what I'm looking for when I'm, you know, going to work with an actor, actress, is that, um, I've said this before, I really talk about the screenplay initially, I spent a couple of hours just talking to them as a, as a person and trying to get them to open up and evolve themselves. Because then I need, I know I, I now know who they are as a person as best I can in the two-hour process. Because I'm always looking for someone who actually is going to be a good partner with me in the process of making the movie. Because that's how I like to do it. I like it. Whatever I do, whatever I work in a film, I try to make it always an ensemble. Because that way you get better work, you get interaction on and off, off camera, and it just makes for better performances. Uh, Charlize, um, you are a movie star. I'm just gonna, I'm also gonna pretend like we're friends. Um, uh, when, when you get an opportunity to be in an ensemble like this, when you, uh, uh, as opposed to having to carry an entire movie on, on your own, is that a relief? How is that, how is that different? Yeah, you know, I, I think even when you are the, if, if you are the lead, you can't think that way because it just, I think, it, there's no room for that kind of thought. It, it kind of muddles what you were supposed to do and, and, and I think can kind of throw you off the track that you need to stay on just in order to tell a good story. And I think when you start thinking about things that you can't really control, then I will say though, I love being around actors and I think that's when I'm at my best. Um, I think there was something about this cast that really was a driving force for me to want to do it. And um, yeah, I. I Everyone but Michael Fassbender was really, was really great, I have to say. Uh, speaking of Michael Fassbender, uh, uh, you play a, uh, a, a we, we call him a cybernetic individual, an android. Uh, I call him a robot. A robot uh, named David. What's it like to, to play a robot? Uh, so you're a human who's playing a robot who's pretending to be a human. Uh, is that fun? Is it more complicated? Uh, what, can you just talk about that a little bit? Well, they kind of neutrally neutralize each other out. So in the end, you just sort of play it straight. No, I mean, the thing, you know, we discussed it. It wasn't like it was going to be a reveal of any sort. We we're going to get the sort of, the fact that David is a robot is, is revealed early in the film. Uh, and then, you know, it was just again the, the wonderful hints that Ridley sort of put my way before we started. He was like, take a look at the Servant film with uh, Dirk Bogart and, um, and various other things. And so, I, you know, the idea that he was a butler uh, type character, you know, that he's there to sort of um, service the aircraft and the crew on it. And, you know, then I sort of thought, well, what sort of physicality I'm going to find there. And for some reason, I thought of Greg Louganis. I don't know, early on, I thought of this guy. I always remembered him when I was younger, and I sort of see him sort of, uh, you know, um, just the way he walked before he sort of dive off the sort of diving board or high block or whatever. And I always thought there was something very funny <laughs> about it uh, to begin with. And, uh, and also, there was a real economy of movement. And I thought that would lend quite well to David. 
And then I, I just really wanted to have as much fun as possible with the character. And then it, it, also the question of like, okay, how much of a programming will start to program itself? So you have this robot who is supposed to respond and interact with human beings and, and, and be able to sort of understand human beings. Uh, would that start to manifest itself in other forms? Would he start to develop his own personality traits um, and ego, insecurities, all the fun human stuff? And, um, and, and then it was just a sort of about you know, playing around with that really and, and, and seeing sort of how much for the audience when they're watching him, they're like, is this guy taking the piss or is he for real? So that was kind of what we were playing with, I think. Do robots piss? Does, does they do, but only to make what? humans feel more comfortable around them. <laughs> yes. Good answer. Ridley, can you, can you, this is, um, you shot this movie in 3D. Uh, it's not a conversion. You shot, shot it in 3D. Um, this, is, this is the first time you've, you've done, uh, done a movie in that format. Yeah. Uh, what was it like, and, and are you happy with the way it turned out? Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. I uh, mean, see, bit of that. But you know, it's also a great cinematographer I was working with called Darius Wolski that I had a great time with, and um, and he was a very nice partnership in the whole process. And uh, you know, because I tend to come from the visual side anyway in my career, that um, I always got the actors last, and actors always used to complain about. I never talked to them initially. In fact, the very first day they were all complaining. I never actually talked to them. You know, 20 years on, I said, that's how I wanted it. <laughs> I wanted them to feel insecure, but actually I was scared to death of talking to them. Um, but, uh, no, so Darius is a great partner, and uh, the film looks marvelous, yeah. But that said, I should also mention all the departments that go into the making of a film like this, which is, you know, Arthur Max, who's a great production designer, you know, as Jan Yates costume, uh, you know, all the special effects people involved in that, and, and the whole shaman a very talented group of people so it, it looks absolutely beautiful awesome do we do we have the twitter the twitter questions yet they're still still working on them okay i'll just uh i'll just tap dance a little while longer um oh, there they are thanks so much we're getting questions on twitter have you heard of it it's um it's some it's one of those things on the uh the internets from what i understand this is from at Nick Williams for uh, within the sci-fi horror genre, do the advances in CG uh, affect uh, how you work, Ridley? So the idea that when you made obviously the original film, um, now now you can do all the stuff in CG. Do you? Is it is it tempting? How, how do you shoot the?